Hey everybody, I'm Louis Amistoy, the editor of the Bakersfield Californian, and I'm uh, joined by Jeff Evans, uh, one of our veteran sports writers. And uh, we've been talking for uh, about a week now about the implications of a bond measure that Bakersfield College is going to put, or actually the Kern Community College is going to put on the November ballot uh, that's going to do some significant renovations uh, to campuses in Bakersfield, Porterville, Porterville and in Ridgecrest. But one of them stood out to us. Now, the bond is about $500 million, a little over $500 million. But the one that stood out to us was $40 million on a wish list that we obtained recently uh, for modernization of Gil Bishop Gymnasium or the sports complex there at Bakersfield College. Uh, you got a chance, Jeff, to tour the facility here uh, yesterday as we take a walk through these uh, facilities. You and Sandy Taylor, the athletic director. Now, full disclosure, the Bakersfield Californian and BC do have a relationship on a business uh, side on covering athletics for BC. But this is interesting because the question is, what? why is this going to cost $40 million? And you got a tour of this facility. Well, what's happened was, of course, this facility was opened in 1956, and Basically, uh, there's no real upgrades since 1956, right? There, we're walking through the locker room, the women's locker room, and uh, the shower facilities, uh, they've said they're in disrepair. You can't even get the parts to replace these showers. And, and you know, and so the, there's some real issues with that. The uh, locker room themselves, uh, which is, uh, you know, which has been on here, right? Here's a, here's a, that's a taller locker, but some of these smaller lockers, they're literally eight inches by eight inches, and you're asking, you know, the the uh, students, and this is not just athletics, this is also student body. Uh, this locker room is used for both physical education classes as, along with the athletics, uh, women athletes at BC, and these small lockers, you can't, if you have a backpack, you can't fit the backpacks even in these lockers. And uh, the, the, the taller locker where you would like put your clothes and maybe we'd try to squeeze your backpack in, there's no way it would fit. And uh, yeah. right here they have 11 of these hair blowers that are in, in the women's locker room. None of them work because, again, the parts, you cannot obtain these parts. The things are probably from the 1950s or 60s. Another private showers? This is the, the only private shower in there. And there's not that many showers even in the women's, in the women's locker right. room. And um, that's the only one. There's one private locker room. So if a woman wants to have a private you know, dressing area, they've got one spot to go. And uh, um, so this is the only handicapped um, of, you know, available shower facility in the in the, in the area as well N none of the rest of them are handicap uh, capabilities we were talking so. about the fact that when bc built this uh gymnasium along with memorial stadium they thought big dream big and built big and you, you know did you get reminded of that when you were there well you know it's the thing is again something is, is so much as they you know these are brand new there's a little bit here's a here's the equipment room and now they have all these jerseys are hanging up, but above it you can see these boxes. That's where older jerseys from a different season are just packed in these, you know, in, in these uh, tubs. And uh, that's they don't have any real storage areas, to, uh, you know, adequately to, to uh, keep these facilities going. But yes, this is definitely was, you know, thought big back in the day. I mean, you're talking about 1955. It was moving from the Bakersfield High campus over to its brand new facility on Panorama Drive, and. Um, Again, this is again the women's equipment room and locker room area, and uh, um, the uh, again it's all jammed into one area. The women do not have uh, as much space as the men do over there. The men, of course, have the Clarou Field House for football. They've also got the George Culver Clubhouse for baseball, and then you have um, you know basically uh, the women are. And then again, not only athletes, but the but the uh, physical education and uh, t uh, students as well are all lumped into one. This is a kind of a you kind of a mishmash. Everything kind of gets poured into this equipment room. This is actually set aside for the uh, physical education uh, part of this. I understand, and uh, that Sandy was pointing it out there on um, just you know the there's no air conditioning also in this room. Um, they there's very air, there's very little air conditioning in any of these rooms. Well, right? they just added air conditioning to the main gymnasium. It just actually started operating in the last week. Um, so now we're going down. This is a, heading down toward the old. Um, this is an old handball court. Now there's no handball here because it's all basically a storage area. You know, you've got the old weight room, which was a brand new weight room open last year. The old weights now are put down here. They can't get rid of the weights. They have to go through auction because it's a state-funded situation. So. Uh, there, are, oh, that's a storage area. Then they have one other, actually, uh, um, handball court that does work. 
So um, the, you can really is. see the the scale of this building, though. I mean, this is a big, big, big facility. It is a big, big building. A lot of real wide. Notice how wide these corridors are. You know, yeah. look at that's a lot of wasted space there. Look, you don't need a corridor nearly as wide as this. That's uh, again, this this shows you how. Again, this was built so long ago in a uh, different era, different times, and uh, you have wide walkways. Uh, look at the, how wide this walkway is. And they're just, you just kind of think, gosh, if you, how could that space be better utilized? And uh, there's, no, no, there's not one classroom inside the Gil Bishop Sports Center. And there's no elevators. There is one elevator, and this is the only elevator mm -hmm. um, in the Gil Bishop Sports Center. It connects the gymnasium floor to the second level of the seating. And... That is, uh, it was an elevator that was only put in about two to three years ago, and it has not been around very long. They, they don't have any way of getting it to the third level of the gymnasium. There's no, so if you are a, a person that needs a uh, handicap needs, you actually have to be physically carried up flights of stairs wow. to go up there. There's no ramps or anything else. Again, this is way before the American Disabilities Act was enacted, which right. was uh, back in 1990, I believe, was when that was enacted. Again, that's a further shot of that elevator, which again was, kind of just put in recently and uh, um, so here's the uh, this is again the, f the gymnasium floor which uh, you know they spruced it up with some paint job here a couple years ago and uh, and um, and it's a nice it's a wide ex it's a nice size gymnasium floor um, well, we've covered basketball there, games and volleyball games there there's the wrestling facility the wrestling facility behind that wall because the bleachers behind that no longer operate you can't even pull them out so they they kind of jimmy rigged that into a you know, wrestling workout room. They had to put pads up because you don't want the athletes to go crashing into it and go flipping over right. the railing. And so they put that. Now here's the the opposite side, which again these are these bleachers are fairly new. They were put in because the previous bleachers were condemned. But there's no railing except on the edges. So like if so again, if you have someone who has a balance issue, there, there's a real safety factor trying to come down those steps. Again, this is looking at the wrestling facility it's a makeshift wrestling facility that they've they've added to the gymnasium here you know it gets down to the point though it's a 40 million dollar project potentially or at least at least what they we saw on the wish list is is that what they're indicating to you that's well that's you know I, I think that's what you, you look at it but the idea like there was some suggestion well gee what if you if you take this building and demolish it and rebuild it but this is such a huge building in square footage it mm -hmm. would just and there's there's so, you know, I, I don't think you can really, I, it would be really difficult to do that. I'm not an architect. I'm not right. sure what it would cost. Even asking Sandy Taylor that, she doesn't know that. So well, uh, comparatively, $15 million is going to building a new gym that seats 2,000 people on a 45,000 square foot uh, a building at North High School. So it's kind of interesting to see this. But again, you go into these offices, though, and it's very dated. And this is the men's locker room. And there are just showers and showers and showers that they're probably not used anymore. Well, there's there is some use, but not again. It was funny because we were somebody was trying to make it work, and just a little water was trickling down. But again, these are the parts that are just so outdated. These are fairly new lockers. They've been a new paint job. It's the one difference between the women's side. This is the school colors, of course. This is this is our favorite thing that Griff Mike Griffith we shot the video, a belt driven uh, fan still still in operation. Let's see, he said it was original from the fifties, probably. And then you can even see there's a door missing on that gym, you know, yeah. on that locker there. And uh, again, this is just going again down into the uh, uh, toward. Um, uh, there's this is now the training room, and uh, the training room here is, uh, you know, is, uh, they need ideally when you're dealing with the number of athletes that they have, they really need something a little bit more, a little larger than this. Put them in the hallways. Um, there's a, yeah, you can. Uh, that's that's almost what you have to do. Uh, and so, uh, and no air conditioning in the training room as well. And going, if you're dealing with sometimes with some of these health issues, concussions, you kind of need uh, a little more temperate. But again, they they say they can put them into an office if they if it comes to that. But it's not your ideal situation. These uh, again, this is the uh, the training, training room, the right? Training room where they're you know where these very uh, tight, very tight. Yeah. Now we're outside. Now this is where the, right up here is where the woman's field house will be built if it is if the uh, approval happens. That right behind that tree there is the old ski hill that they used to have a ski class, to, and they had a, a, a carpet, and that's where that field house is going to go. Now, this is inside the Clarue field house, which is the football-specific locker room. These are brand-new lockers. They've only been installed this uh, year, and... Uh, they give it's a little bit more of a modern look. This allows each of the athletes to be able to have storage area for cell phones, wallets, personal effects. Yeah. They did not have those even a year ago. So that right. 
This was a, a joint venture between the college and the, and the helmet club, which is the booster football club. booster club. Right. And there is some discussion about some improvements to Memorial Stadium. Big thing on that is, of course, nothing uh, ADA, uh, American Disabilities Act, uh, you know, there's no ramps, there's no elevator. Um, you know, if you're trying to get down to this field, you can get down on a, on a ramp on between the field house and, the f on, and, and this area right here, which is through the gate. But on that's the, that side there is the Mount Vernon side we're looking at. Behind there, there's no way to get into that, uh, into the upper level or the field from that side of the field because of the, uh, there's no ramps or anywhere right. else. So uh, Again, back to the field house and then Sandy explaining more about what, what the plan is. All right. So, Jeff, you take away from this visiting the facility and, and uh, you know, what do you, it's, we're gonna, what, you're going to have a story coming on this obviously this weekend. What do you expect out of it? Well, I mean, the big thing is whether the voters are going to approve it, mm -hmm. and then what happens if the voters don't approve it? Yeah. And because uh, it is going to take a 55 percent vote uh, voter approval for this to fly, and it isn't just uh, Kern County voters because you are dealing with Saracoso College uh, out in Ridgecrest as well as uh, um, Porterville Porterville College, right. and uh, so there's going to be voters in those areas that are also going to be voting for this, and uh, and there is uh, you know the wish list also includes items at those two institutions, so. Uh, the question is be whether they get the support. And uh, again, you're dealing with a 60-year-old facility. 1955 is when the stadium opened. The campus itself opened in 1956. And this, uh, you know, as, a, as you, if you have anything, uh, if you own a home, if you imagine a home that's 60 years old, you know, you, you start having little issues, right. uh, whether the air conditioning breaks down or your garbage disposal breaks down. And, and uh, this is... Um, you now, know, you, you've been to Gil Bishop many times in your career. I've been there many times with you over the last few years. Uh, you know, was that really your first kind of look at the guts of it, the bowels of, this, of the facility? You know, facility? I've, I've, I've been in bits and pieces of it, but, uh, you know, there's so many different stairways, and there's so many the, – uh, the go, going into, you know, you kind of look around. You can kind of get – it's like a maze in there. You can kind of right. easily get kind of twisted around. Um, and you didn't even show, like, what they call the huddle, which is like the foyer area the off of – uh, the front of the school, and there's like a there's like a cafeteria part in there they don't even use anymore for like it's a big snack bar area. Yeah, that's there's correct. also a press box. Um, yeah, and there's, you actually take up another flight of stairs to go up to that press box. If you ever go inside that uh, gymnasium, you can look actually see the windows and drop down. That's where they used to have scouts would go up there and could design plays because you're looking at the court from basket to basket, so you can kind of see how the the playing uh, you know the the plays are designed, you know, and uh, on, right. on a basketball and that kind of thing, and that's where you would always see scouts back in the day. And uh, but uh, that's uh, especially high school. Like, you know, it wasn't that many years ago when they would before East High School's got their gym built. That's been well, actually a few years ago. I remember going up there and covering high school games, and you'd be 2,500, 3,000 people up there covering high school basketball games, not covering them, watching them because. That was the best place to hold it because at that time East High had that very small gymnasium, and whenever they played Bakersfield High, they would play up at the up at the college because uh, you know Bakersfield High could have a pretty good crowd at their place, but right. it would be a disadvantage for East to be playing at Bakersfield High once in a neutral site at the other. So they would both play at Bakersfield College. Same thing when Foothill at the time was very strong, South High was very strong, and when these teams played each other, you would have all these m intermixing of games, and you. The, the town loved it. It would be 2,000, 2,500 people at these games. And, uh, and of course, the football games at that time were also drawing uh, in the, from 50s into the 70s into the 80s. You know, you're averaging uh, 28 years. And the first 28 years of Memorial Stadium's history, Bakersfield College averaged over 10,000. 16 of those years, they averaged over 14,000. Wow, incredible. All right, well, great stuff, Jeff. Thanks again for your time and for taking that tour. And we're going to try to pass a bond initiative to get you a new shirt. How's that sound? Hey, I like orange. I like orange. There it is. The man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Evans, the Bakersfield Californians. He's a legend here. No doubt about it. All right, follow the story. We'll see you guys real soon.